As a scientist, what you're about is, if you're researching, you're trying to look outside the box. And in doing so, you don't really know what's there. When I think of what inspired me, I have to think back to years ago when I was a child reading about the exploits of people like Samuel Morse, first telegraph communication, and I guess most of all the first telephone uh, communication from Alexander Graham Bell. When we're coming up with this project to experiencing the first thought communication brain to brain, that's really something that I want to do. It's something that I want to experience despite the dangers. I believe that what we are is partly genetic ancestors and what we've experienced in life. Inspiration comes from that. It doesn't come from laying down hoping that something is going to come, something will inspire me. No, something won't. You've got to inspire yourself. If you don't, then you'll sit there and dream and you'll never get anywhere. The uh, implant that I had in 1998 was a tracking implant. Nightclubs in Rotterdam and Barcelona, you can get an implant of this type and then you get exclusive access to parts of the book. But I never know it would be a passion item. I did get a very few emails from Christian extremists saying, oh, it's the mark of the beast. I was going to be 666. The chip was transmitting out the code 666, which the computer recognized as being me. But it didn't work. In fact, the whole system crashed just before it was implanted. Darren recoded it as 161, and on 161 it was working. Why the system crashed, we never found out. I'm not a believer in ghosts and ghouls and uh, mystic happenings, but on this occasion, there is some strange going on. The second implant, linking my nervous system to the computer, which to me was much more profound. I think that a lot of people still don't understand exactly what we were doing and what it means. This is where the neurosurgeons opened it up and then I had an array of 100 electrodes fired into my nervous system, linking my nervous system ultimately with the computer. And wires then ran up my arm and came out onto this connector pad here. So literally these connections were externalizing my nervous system across the internet to move the robot hand which was back in knitting. So when I moved my hand, my neural signals moved my hand but also moved the robot hand. It's the double edge because it, it's a therapeutic role. So where somebody has some illness, if they're paralyzed or they have a mental problem, to uh, enable them to do things that they couldn't do otherwise. So that's one side. But on the other side, it's using the technology to enhance everybody, to upgrade everybody. In terms of machine intelligence, we don't to have machines that can outthink humans. I see that as an extremely dangerous thing. Humans are probably going to be crazy enough to give such machines, such robots, the ability to do nasty things to humans. So I have a distinct worry there. Kevin's log, October 2005. Working on the latest implant experiment, hopefully it will be an inspiration to people who are following, give them ideas about what's possible. Trying different things out, linking a human brain directly with technology. Okay, it's never been done before with a regular person, but the only way I'm to find out is to actually try it. Using myself for it is dangerous, I know. Uh, there's possibilities that I might not come out of this alive, but I want to experience it. I want to feel 
what it feels like to communicate for the first time by thought with another individual. In years to come, people will probably look back and say, oh, look how trivial this is, but to actually experience it for the first time, to actually feel the signals myself, this is really something that I want to. Uh, and if there's a risk, okay, if, if I die in the process, well, all right, I, I've given it a go, I've tried my best. That's great. We're making history. Well,